Is your girlfriend over at your place there now? Yes. She did and she give you did she give you strange <laughs> fucking looks? <laughs> no, because she's been present for several podcasts. Okay, this I knew is, she was there. One other one, I just standard. I just didn't know. Like you sit over, all of a penis, penis, <laughs> dinger, dinger, and it's like and she's sitting over there going, yeah. "Did he have a fucking stroke or what the fuck going on over there?" <laughs> Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Battlefield, where we cover Battlefield and other gaming news. It's Glass back here once again, and with me as always, our Cryptic Panther. Hey everybody. And doing work. Hello. And we're back once again with our new format to talk about Battlefield and other big gaming news. We'll start with Battlefield as usual. Panther, take it away. Okay, so DICE did release a little bit of info on the new uh, upcoming DLC. Um, they shall not pass. What the hell is it called? I can't remember. So yeah. I'm, you're not passing. Anyways, yeah, they, they just, shall not pass. They shall not pass. Yeah, they quoted, quoted from the Lord yeah, of the Rings. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> so the only information which really has been released is what they give us in a link from their website. We're kind of going to cover that kind of like their verbiage since they haven't released anything new since last week. So it's four maps, and the first map listed here is called Verdun Heights. It says, the opening barrage of the Battle of Verdun created massive forest fires in which players will fight for domination. This is an uphill battle towards the massive fortress of Verdun. A constant grinding struggle where the artillery never stops, where the forge and the devil's anvil continues to consume even the bravest combatants. The so only got a the, forest fire. Yeah, the forest fire. More fire in battlefield. So in, I hope our uniforms are not cloaked in kerosene. If I, if I drive a tank over, uh, so I still feel like uh, I feel like gas grenades and fire should have some type of explosive combination, but they don't. Napalm. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But though, but on, on a real note, though, Ma- like seriously, napalm and mustard gas combo grenades. You need, you, oh need you need the forge for the right elements to make it. <laughs> I I feel like that would be a actually really cool like gameplay thing if they uh, if like for instance somebody had gas down somewhere and you toss an incendiary. And it lit and it, it up. Like, lit it oh, up, yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. Right? And you could get rid of the gas. Yeah. yeah it would be also a good counter. Someone throws a gas in, and if you're back far enough, yeah, just lob an incendiary at it, burn it up, and then run on through. We yeah. say that, yeah. but the first time we got killed by gas grenades <laughs> catching on fire, we would be on here <laughs> screaming. Like, we're we're we'd, have, we'd have a dedicated podcast. We'd have a to, dedicated episode. Yeah, this, yep. this new gas of flammable grenades a piece of shit. <laughs> We're not calling this the Battlefield Podcast anymore. Fuck you, Dice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, never mind. I okay. mean, <laughs> no, you're, you're probably right. I'm like, hey, this sounds cool. No, yeah. it would not be cool. Comment <laughs> below if you think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a vote. How about that? Oh, shit. All right. So uh, moving on from uh, the forest fire, um, you'll have to forgive me for the pronunciation or, or rather the mispronunciation. I'm sure I'm going to do on these uh our next map was uh fort devoe and they said that uh it's the first big engagement inside a fort during world war one and it takes place in the dark underworld of fort devoe down in the maze of dark galleries and wet stone corridors french and german troops fight ferociously with grenades guns bayonets and flamethrowers watch your corners um this is going to be the new metro the new uh lockers locker yeah, yeah. But hey, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that. I, like I mean, I, I like a Battlefield One, but you know that itch that doesn't get scratched because you don't have that type of a, of a map to right to to play on. So I'm looking forward to see what they bring. So yeah, bring it on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I like close quarters fighting uh, probably more than any other style, uh, even in Battlefield. So uh, you know, getting right up in their face and up close and personal, uh, especially for me with I like shotguns. So uh, yeah. That sounds like it'll be right up my alley. That'll be cool. Um, the next one, and I'm really going to butcher this one. I, it's, I think, Sosom or Soso. Or I, I don't I don't know quite how to say it. Uh, but You're anyways, close. We'll move on. Yeah, somewhere around there. Should be recognizable, at least, if you uh, see the text. All right, so it says, Take part in one of the biggest tank assaults of World War One. The French 10th Army moves to take back Sos... Fuck this name. Using their powerful <laughs> St. Germain tanks. Uh, planes, tanks, and infantry clash in the beautiful French countryside in the early hours of a hot summer day. Only the thunderstorm is louder than the war. Uh, so a focus on vehicle warfare on this map. That's a my countryside. Alley. Yeah, there you go. 
I hope that the thunderstorms really cool. They make that blur that makes me think that it's gonna be. You think know, that'll be like, the uh, the weather effect? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah. I think be. so, but I'm just I'm, I'm hoping it's cool, like lightning strikes. It yeah. would be really cool, kill, actually, kill, to see some lightning killed by environment. Yeah. <laughs> Until it happens, Bad luck. you're like, yeah, this is fucking cool. Damn it, I can kill luck. my lightning again. Yeah. And, and again, that would be <laughs> cool, but if we got killed by that, <laughs> it would be right back up in it. <laughs> what the shit, dice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this would quickly turn into the bitch field podcast. Uh, oh. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, as a result of all of that, we have rupture which is what's going to happen to our anuses if those things happen uh and the, the, if we get any uh, requests uh, fulfilled right heard you guys like rupture anuses <laughs> uh the, <laughs> so the blurb here is in dire need to capture key bridges across the oh <laughs> asinine river asinine. <laughs> the french find themselves back into battlefields where poppies grow over a rusty wreck from previous tank battles. It might seem calm, but this maze of steel beasts provides an excellent place for those who plan an ambush. As sun sets over the Fontenoy, the battle wakes up. So this sounds like it's going to be a... Die a ass 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 yeah. ass <laughs> if there's any French people listening to that, I, you guys should probably name your shit something that can be read by English. That, that was butcher. <laughs> that was a butcher. I said exactly what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely intentional. So this looks like it's uh, going to be a day into night, like a, a day night cycle map. Oh, I hope so. And yeah, that would be well, cool. We we are seeing uh, kind of both ends of that because uh, the other one says at the dawn. Yeah. Oh yeah, good call. Yeah. So uh, maybe we might see, we might see that cycle. That could also be um, one of the next little blurbs that we have to read about which i'll get to in a second i'll bring it back there but it, it might bleed into that um so the next thing from there that they tell us is that the french army joins the fight uh hardened and fearless the french join the fight don the faction's characteristic blue uniform and defend your homeland uh okay i mean i feel like that should be pretty much the headline for the dlc but they put the maps first um <laughs> true we should we done yeah. that wrong <laughs> what i don't know oh well um, so the the next thing, and this is going to be a big one. We have a new game mode coming, and I'm really excited for this. This is called Frontlines. Um, so the blurb that they have written down, I'll, I'll read it verbatim, and then we'll talk about it. It says, experience a mix of conquest and rush as you fight for chained control points in a tug-of-war front line. Both teams fight for one flag at a time, and when this objective is captured, the action moves on to the next. Capture the enemy's HQ control point, and the game turns into a rush-style section where telegraph posts need to be attacked or defended. So we have a, a push-and-pull tug-of-war for objectives, it seems like. It seems like it's going to be conquest until you capture their home base. And then from there it turns into rush, where you have to advance by like uh, point by point. But the way the, the way it's worded, it says fight for chained control points in a tug of war. Oh. So both teams fight for one flag. So there's only going to be one objective until either you win or lose it. Then there's going to be a new objective up here. So they take the chain length from the BF4 DLC. Instead of having all the objectives available be taken, they cut it down to only one is available until one's taken or lost by one side. So... It's almost a mishmash of four game types. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm picturing Suez actually because that's pretty much a straight line, and both teams starting at either end, and they're, they have to link all the points maybe before they get to the enemy's HQ, like their spawn, and then control that, and then I, I don't know. It's, a, it, it is a little uh, mishy mashy, and I, I don't, I don't think it's explained very well here. Yeah, we um, yeah we haven't seen any gameplay of it or anything, so it definitely yeah. it definitely adding a new game mode that that's going to add, like I said, that push pull. It it's got a bit of the of um, operations kind of like you mentioned earlier, like pre podcast. Yes. It's it's kind of a mismatch of like the old chain link, conquest, rush, and and operations kind of like it kind of seems to play off a little bit of everything. 
Yeah. So, well, what I'm hoping is that we get another like extensive game mode. Um, you know, where the matches are are longer. Operations, I think, does a great job of making you feel like you're part of a campaign. But if if you could do it with this new Frontlines game mode, without the loading screen to stop you, like if it just fluidly moves to the next thing, yeah, um, I think that would be awesome. I think it'd be an improvement on the the operations uh, that they have set, like already how how it is. But uh, I'm excited. I, I want some more information. Obviously, you know, yeah. I want them to explain a little bit more in detail what's going on here. But it it sounds promising. And and on and on the operations front, since we're talking about it, there was a tweet. It, it's not mentioned here in the DLC list that we have, and I didn't put it in the notes. I thought I'd mention it, but there was a mention also of two new operations being added with the DLC as well. Sweet. Um, so, I, we, yeah, you're the you're the you're the one that doesn't like it. You need you need to you need to team up with some with some actual um, squad mates and, and run through some operations. I need to like play the game. With yeah, first. too. Yeah, you need to do that as well. That's maybe that's step one. <laughs> step one is play the fucking game, and step, step two is play, step two play with play friends, with and then step yeah. three is play some fucking operations. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you there. We'll get you there. Yeah. All right, so Panther, tell us about uh, what else is coming. All right, so also mentioned, uh, it says, Pilot a Steel Behemoth. Spawn into the Char 2C tank. Control an epic new behemoth based on the real-world French tank. The super heavy beast may turn the tide of the entire battle. So they keep with the turning the tide uh, slogan from the from the main part of the game. Uh-huh. I've seen some um, like old-school photos of this tank. And it was like fucking massive. It had like a big crew inside to operate it, and it was like yeah. basically a moving um, house on on tank treads. Um, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see how this works because it's not on. It's not going to be on rails from like the tank, so it's gonna it's gonna not be like the train. So you're not stuck yeah. into one path. It's not going to be an airship where you're vulnerable to anything on the ground because you're in a tank so you'd be able to hide behind buildings etc so well my my guess it's going to move extremely slowly it's going to be a slow i'm figuring it's going to be fairly slow considering the size of it and if it was anywhere is at all fast yeah it's going to be way op but hey i'm a big fan of tank so i'm going to be interested to see this big bitch on the battlefield yeah so and moving on speaking of tanks we get a new tank the assault tank (laughs) The Saint Shimon was the most heavily armored Allied tank of the war. It dominated the battlefield with its impressive French construction. Yeah, it figures the French would need more armor than the other <laughs> factions. <laughs> um, there's not a lot of detail. There's one screenshot. I mean, the link link to all this is going to be in the details as, as always. But there's one picture of it, and it's like a, it's a weird looking tank with a big ass turret at the front. So. I'm I'm all for, I'm excited to see what these two new tanks are going to be like. Yeah, uh, it just seems like this DLC is extremely vehicle heavy. I don't know if it seems like that to you guys, but we we've got a lot of a lot of vehicle talk. Yeah, well, I mean they, they covered it over the vehicles in in the maps, but then yeah, two new tanks. So yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I mean one one new tank, one new behemoth. I mean you can't really say. And well, I, and, the, and, the description and all these, yeah, except for one, talks very yeah. vehicle heavy. Right. I think. And the thing is, too, we we don't know if is that the behemoth on all four maps. Maybe, yeah, that's a good question too. Yeah, it's, that's not explained either. So, no. typical uh, dice in EA fashion, we don't have really much information to go on. I was Just, uh, I was hoping. We were, hey, there's this. Yeah, I was kind of hoping we were going to get a few more details and even a trailer before. Uh, we record it probably come out after we record this it'll probably be at the next day so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah. our fucking luck <laughs> seems that they plan around that sure. yep bastards i know it <laughs> <laughs> all right so the last part of the dlc uh doing work tell us about that ah so we have a new class a new elite class called the trench raider elite uh, it's gonna use melee it seems like it's very melee heavy and grenade heavy. You have a uh, brutal raider club and an impressive grenade arsenal. It says that you will be a terrifying sight. The, uh, the image baby. looks pretty savage. He's got that crazy, like, ballistic looking mask on. What go. was that, Panther? There you go, Baker. He's going to have those gas flame grenades. 
Yeah, he's gonna have those <laughs> napalm. Yeah, there we go. Those, those pocket nukes, thermal detonators. That's what he's pocket gonna have. Pocket napalm. Yeah. <laughs> or those uh, those grenades from uh, what's that movie, Underworld Evolution? Where they spray the gas out for like ten seconds and then sparks it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're also adding yeah. a new stationary weapon. It says it's similar to a field gun. It's called the Siege Howitzer. It can be operated by an infantry player. It's operated through the indirect aiming and firing in the same way as a mortar and artillery in vehicles. So I wonder if it's just going to be like a, a longer range, harder hitting mortar? Probably something like that. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it sounds like from the description it's going to be this is indirect aiming and firing, and I don't understand why. So, in other words, well, you just, that it's, you, it's, just, it's, you just hope for the best and you shoot it. It's not going to give you the mini map like the mortar out of the, um, the train does, I take it. Well, even the mortar the, on the train, that's still will. indirect firing because it doesn't give you like a pinpoint spot where the mortar's going to hit. You get that, you get that little circle. To an area. Those are, if those are anywhere at all hidden and hard to get to to get people off them, they're going to be fucking devastating. Yeah. yeah. Like, they'll be, like, this field cannons, or the field guns, they're semi-popular. I had a guy actually kill me. He had three fucking service stars with a field gun. Jesus. I was like, How first time I thought, I thought it was long. a fucking joke. I'm like, that must be a glitch. The next map blew it up, and I was running around, all of a sudden I get killed by a field gun. Same dude, three service stars. I'm like, and how do you have that many kills in a field gun? So, uh, this guy. twice there. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm just saying, like, that's... I've never seen that with anybody else. I mean, I've killed my field guns before, but that was crazy. So this dude's going to love these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, I mean, like, the field gun... I, I've used the field gun quite a bit. I mean, actually, quite a bit. I've hardly ever used a field gun. I mean, but these sound like they're going to be something to uh, to really fuck people up with. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll try it out at least, but I, I don't know. I don't usually use the stationary stuff. I mean, typically for me, it's a death sentence, so I don't really try. Yeah, that's kind of my experience with them. I get killed quite a bit on them. Yeah, sitting in one spot like that, just it's it's very exposed. Yeah, but they come in handy though. If you're you know yeah, you're playing sometimes you're playing a class, if you're playing medic, and you see a you know a tank coming, put a rounder sure. to him, and then fucking run for your life instead of <laughs> just running for your life. You know. Yeah. yeah. Or shoot down a plane, you know. I'm not saying they're worthless. I just, to <laughs> me, it's, it's normally not a, a no. very good trade off. Yeah, a lot of people run past them and don't use them. But I mean, I just, I'm just happy with the fact that they're put somewhere that they're actually fucking usable. Not like yeah. in past battlefield games, it's there, but you can't shoot <laughs> nothing with it because it aims the wrong side of the field, you know. So I mean, yeah. yeah, it's a step in the right direction. And I mean, as long as these things aren't, as long as they have a slow enough reload where it's not going to be. Like a lot of spam, people would sit on them if they're really slow to reload. So I hope there's a nice balance. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll we'll find out once they uh, either release videos or some more information to us. All right, so we're gonna move on now. We're done with battlefield news. We're gonna move on to gaming news. Um, how these are gonna work is I I'm gonna read off some stuff and we're gonna have uh, discussions from those I guess. So the first thing up uh, is pretty important. Actually, it's a big thing. The PS4 is getting a system software update, uh, version 4.5. Some of the details include external hard drive support, custom wallpapers, uh, improvements to the quick menu, and support for 3D Blu-rays on PlayStation VR. How do you guys feel about this update? It's pretty pretty meaty. There's a lot to it. Yeah, I was I was surprised whenever I you know heard that. Actually, I signed up for the beta and didn't get in. Damn it, Sony. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I had no idea what was coming. I mean, people have been squawking for quite a while about what they want to see and, you know, what they want in updates. And I know everyone's like, oh, Xbox has got external hard drive. And I'm thinking, well, is it really that important? But, you know, as you install more and more games and stuff like that, yeah, having the ability just to plug a hard drive in to the USB port and having more storage space is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, I'm. I find myself with, without really meaning to, but I, I find myself getting more and more digital titles. So I'm actually running into the problem currently of having to like figure out what I need to uninstall to make room, or you know, what do I feel like playing? And yeah. the, the uninstall install process is you know kind of trying me right now. So 
that they're going to release uh, external hard drive support is going to be pretty handy for that. Yeah, the, fact, the fact that it's with USB 3.0, so you shouldn't have any, um, you're not going to have any latency issues considering the way the PS4 runs the hard drive now, it's going to be the same. And it'll support up to 8 terabyte drive. Yeah, nice. that's nice. Damn, that's wicked. Yeah. I'm excited. I just got to buy a new hard drive now. Yeah. Uh, wallpapers. Anyone have any opinions about this? I, I think it's something that should have been there kind of from day one, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I do. I mean, like, I mean, it took them forever on PlayStation 3 to have that stuff. Um, custom wallpapers are cool. At least you can put whatever the hell you want. That's kind of nice. I mean, I don't, I'm don't. i not one of these pitching a hole into forcing you to use whatever is available or having to pay for extra shit. You know, paying for themes and wallpapers and stuff to me is a little, a little excessive. Um, yeah. And I'll, and I'll give it a quick plug. Um, there is a subreddit, uh, PSW, if you're looking for some wallpapers for your PlayStation. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't own this sub. It's not mine. I'm just one of the mods. <laughs> and, but, I mean, I don't make money off it anyway. It's just not like I'm plugging any fucking business. But um, uh, uh. It's, yeah. So if you're looking for some wallpapers, once the once the new firmware drops, it's one place to, to find some. If you're looking for stuff. Yep. Uh, I think that one of the biggest things here, uh, obviously there, there's more updates there. We just listed the big ones here. Um, you can find the rest, uh, the details on the PlayStation blog. But the 3D Blu-ray support for PlayStation VR, again, I feel like on release that should have already been there. I feel like that's a natural, like, organic part of that process is watching a 3D movie on VR. That should be standard you know uh, and i actually didn't know that it wasn't included yeah that's a good point I, but that i guess i never even thought of it either that i never i guess no, I, I, I just figured it would be there you know in home 3d's kind of gone way the fucking dodo really um yeah 3d tvs were like the biggest fucking thing for the longest time but i hardly hear anybody talk about them anymore well i mean i've got a 3d tv well, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it and people don't own them or buy them, but for the longest time, that's it was the biggest thing for a biggest selling point. I, and now that 4K is yeah. kind of, everyone's like leaning, oh, everyone's going to get a 4K TV, and it's like, well, they're not throwing the 3D in your face as much. It just doesn't seem to be a big selling point, whether it's, you know, just because maybe I'm, I'm not seeing it or whatever, but... No, yeah. I, I think but you're I, right. 3D is, has been a lot less of a, a marketable option. Um, not that it's, you know, any, any less like cool of a thing. I think I, I like the three D. Oh, don't get me wrong, um, I like three D as well. But, but yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely not a major selling point anymore. Yeah, that's that's pretty much gone but away. But yeah, I, like I said, right. thank you. I didn't realize three D Blu Ray support wasn't already on the VR. But yeah. I, I've never even had a VR helmet on my face, so I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. No, I me, me neither. But I've yeah. I've been following some of the the features closely. But you, I know you you can watch movies yeah in playstation vr so again I, I figure that 3d would be an organic natural thing like of course it would have 3d support but no i guess not no uh, yeah so so good news for vr owners there you, you would go. think that would be like one of the selling out things. of the box yeah. yeah features for a vr that's it yeah yeah the, yeah the quick menu improvements any 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 improvement to speeding up the ui i'm happy with I mean, yeah, so, I use the quick menu a lot. It's uh, it's very handy, especially if yeah. you're running like uh, Spotify or something. You can you can hit the quick menu and then R1, R2, or uh, L1, R1 to go forward, back. You can pause. You can turn the volume of the music up and down without having to get out of your application. It's pretty yeah. handy. Yeah. So anytime they can make improvements to speed that up, I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Since they're, right, since, so... they're, since they're not going to give us full customizability over. The, the OS, we, we're going to have to take whatever improvements they kind of give us, but yeah, improvements we'll take. Okay. Uh, so there now seems to be a boost option on the PS4 Pro. It's new for, new firmware uh, that can give a FPS rate increase to non-pro patched games. So this mm -hmm. means that the back catalog of PS4 games that are not necessarily pro compatible or were made before the PS4 Pro um, it'll give them a frame rate increase, which is nice. And again, something though I, I didn't know wasn't already there. I feel like again, like the whole point of the PS4 Pro was like improved, things play better, things play smoother. And I, I thought it was natural that 
it would have already had this increase. But I, again, I, I guess I take it for granted and I well, thought with, too. With the PS4 Pro is the fact that a lot of the games were patched to use the new power, like Uncharted and like The Last of Us. And I, I mean, there's a whole list of games that receive patches to allow them to utilize the new power. But not every game has been patched, and not every game is going to be patched. But anything going forward is going to be designed for both. But the old yeah. games, and it's not like every game is going to be. Oh, now every game plays 1080 60. The some of the games that maybe had some higher fluctuations of frame rates. I was the, the information that was first released was from a, a a Chinese website, I do believe. But there's been some other leaks of other information. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, hopefully, if anyone wants to do some more digging, Neither, none of us want a pro, um, so we don't really have any opinion. We'd have on to it. ask. And uh, the new firmware is not even out yet. So, Wixie has one, or Wojo, one of those guys has one. Uh, yeah, yeah w- 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 Wixie has, yeah, and um, Scotty, he's got. We have a couple of buddies that have them, so, um, and they, and they're like in the middle complaints, but, um, yeah. So it, it some older games that may have struggled with say keeping thirty constantly this is this is going to help those games be a little smoother be a little better so um there's a ps4 pro advantage once again <laughs> yeah well, well i mean i i i can't really argue against it no i'm not I'm not they, they paid it. for a, a new system oh, I mean, yeah. oh i'm not arguing against it at all yeah so it's it's nice that they they're including that in the firmware to help the games that aren't going to ever be patched for pro yeah. So I mean, any, any improvement, like I say, the same as the UI. Any any improvement, it's an improvement, right? Sure. So, yeah. but I mean, yeah, that's something that wasn't released in the initial um, update details. This was kind of something that was kind of released after the fact. So, um, I know it's still, it's still, like I said, it's still the beta, and it's not, um, it's not been released yet. I think it's a four point five for, or whatever the next version for Pro is. I don't know if they're running on the same numbering sequence for UI up there for OS updates, but um, their next update is going to include that. Yeah. All right. That's good for them. Um, Next thing we've got on our list is the Electronic Arts Quarter 3 2017. Is that correct, right? Quarter 3 2017. That can't be right. Yeah. 2016? Mm, No. Is that Hello? Yeah, it would have to be 2016. They can't can't talk about yeah, 2017. I think. Q-Bears. Well, I think it's. It, they do talk about. Uh, if you look at the, the positive, was 2017 because they're talking about upcoming as well. They're talking about. Well, it's a. It's an earnings call though. Well, that's what it's. That's what I'm pretty sure it says. No, it says welcome to EA's third quarter fiscal 2017 or uh, it's fiscal 2017. So if their fiscal year starts like July 1st, then uh, they're technically coming into the third quarter. Okay. Yeah. Well, what, so whatever. That could be. Yeah, we don't Whatever need to argue at that in. point. EA Stupid had a, a, an earnings conference call where they talked about how much money they made. That's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, so some things that came out of there, are, though, are actually pretty important. Uh, we've got some big news. Uh, there's a new Star Wars Battlefront coming holiday 2017, which isn't really news news now. But I guess they expanded on it and gave us a little bit more. Uh, they said it's going to be even bigger. You're going to have more locations from the Star Wars universe, more heroes, multiple Star Wars eras. <laughs> A single-player campaign developed by Dice, Motive, and Criterion. It's going to be right. all of the DLC that they should have just given us with the current Battlefront. Yes, it should They're have like, been. No, no, Star no, Wars just hold it. Let's wait a year. Sell them another game. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm I'm excited for another Battlefront game. Maybe oh, I'm excited Emma? for a true Battlefront game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, man, I mean, they could have put out the Battlefront Two HD remaster, and I'd have plunked down thirty bucks immediately <laughs> for that game. Yeah. So immediately. The big, the biggest thing is adding a single player campaign. That's nice, as long as it's, yeah. as long as it's not a, just a short ass little dinky Stupid just to shut thing, people yeah. up well, campaign. I, you know, fucking, you know. where's Yoda? Come on, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> But well, it says more heroes, so maybe even maybe bigger, more okay. I mean, they to me they dropped the fucking ball in Battlefront. The game, the game played yeah. good, looked fucking good, sounded fucking good, but there was no content. Yeah, it was yet like, another example. Shiny, shiny turd. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, I, I lost interest in it pretty quick. So, well, I mean, the worst thing was everybody seemed to, the rest of my friends list. Kind of oh my gosh, yeah, it was really all fast. Battlefront for like seven or eight days, and then it was, yeah. like, <laughs> eh, like the slope drop was just stupid. Yeah, yeah so I, I definitely not yeah. going to be a day one for me. Um, I'm definitely going to be waiting to see what content is and what people are saying about it, but I, I, I'm looking forward to what's coming potentially, but I'm not going to be like holding my fucking breath. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we've had two major releases for beloved franchises that have really, really dropped the ball on content with, with Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefield One. I hate to say it, but both of them, you know, content is the problem, the single problem. I as I feel like it is with those games. Yeah. Is that they're they're beautiful. They are some of the prettiest games ever created. Um, they play smooth as hell. They both had good releases, but there's just nothing to them. Yeah. You know, there's there's no meat. Um, so if they hopefully have learned their lesson, because the complaints have been identical between Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefield 1, is that, yeah. you know, this is great, but we want more. There's not enough here. So hopefully after now two releases, even though the, the both of the games did well, uh, they, they both sold well, and they got good reviews and everything, so... Hopefully they've heard the the cry of uh, the, their audience, you know, above the review scores and and what the games look like. That we just want more. Yeah, they, they oh. do they do kind of tend to listen to the community, but they don't listen to everything. Um, yeah. Like I know they can. I mean, they can't give the game away for free, <laughs> but you know, I mean, yeah. they do seem to kind of listen to their community, and I think they've learned that you know they they see they see Battlefront sales in the fucking toilet. They got to know that. You know they screwed up. Battlefield One is a bigger improvement on it. It's still still lacking, and I mean we're not going to beat the dead horse as we do every podcast. But right. you're hopefully yeah they, they, they've hey we, we've we've learned our lesson in here. We're going to give you a game that's like you know pretty much you know here's here's a full game. Go to fucking town on it, and the DLC is just going to be extra, you know extra side dish. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's it should be pretty clear from anybody that does research on it, especially you know the actual game developer that the consistent complaint with their last two games that they've put out has been lack of content. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully, uh, and I, th I think that they've noticed that because the specific things that they mention are that it's bigger. It's got more locations, more heroes, multiple star Wars heroes. They're, they're telling us that the entire process and all of that content has been expanded. Exactly. So, I mean, so far it sounds good, but who's to say right now? And we already know their gaming engine is fucking top notch, so yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. So we'll see where that goes, but that that's good news so far. Um, and then we have a kind of a uh, a little tease here of something that could apparently be game changing, literally, um, to the entire gaming market. So I will read uh, exactly as this is written. This is from the EA conference here. Um, and at the end of the fiscal year, our Bioware studio will be delivering an all new IP, a clean sheet design with new concepts, new gameplay mechanics, and new stories set in a unique new universe. This game has the potential to fundamentally disrupt the way people think about an action title, bringing friends together to play in an exhilarating new ways. We're very excited about the future of this new franchise and its ability to attract a large global audience. This sounds very ambitious, boys. I don't calling know. it, calling it right now. They're what? trying to, they're trying to do what Destiny did. Mark my words, <laughs> dude. Dude, I, write it down. I hope not, because I don't want another Destiny. No, 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 not not necessarily another Destiny, but a. I don't want to say open world, but a, non linear a world. Drop in, drop out, multiplayer, cooperative, shooter slash platformer kind of thing. Borderlands esque, maybe not quite Borderlands, but that style of game is something that Bioware has not done before, if I'm recalling correctly. Maybe with yeah. uh, Dra was Dragon Age Bioware. That might yes. be that might be similar. I don't know if they had like drop in, drop out co op. Oh, I mean, even so if they speak. did, that's that's been done before in a lot of games. That's right, 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 right. But yeah, when they when they drop the thing, clean sheet design with new concepts, new gameplay mechanics. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, they're throwing those, out everything we know about terms. games. Yeah, well, that, that's pretty objective, though. It could be thrown at everything 
Bioware knows about games. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, uh, it, it could go either way. But then it says, I don't know. It, it, you know, potentially disrupt the way people think about action, an action title. Like, yeah, and a large global audience. I think that's a cue that this actually might be s- somewhat closer to an MMO. Yeah. It could be. Yeah, it could be. be. I mean, they're using they're using terms to definitely well, it's an action title. Well, they use global and they use, you know, new story set in a unique universe and but using big terms. And I mean, this is only in a conference call. This isn't even like a teaser trailer for no. like a, like you know, like a, a fucking corporate you know, yeah, buzzwords, man. But still, yeah. like I mean, that to, to release these are pretty big buzzwords, though, man. Yeah, but to to release that little bit just in a conference call that you know up until someone posted a link on Reddit, I didn't even know had recently taken place. So, yeah, like I don't follow EA and follow their Twitters and their shit and whatever with their fiscal fucking financial. I don't give a shit. <laughs> just give me good video games to play, dudes. That's all I care about. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, like I like I said, so I read that and I'm like, well, that's definitely interesting. I'm, I'm extremely like intrigued like yeah color me interested because bioware is i think one of the most fundamentally trustworthy developers that we have nowadays and they, they pretty much consistently along right up there with rockstar and naughty, uh, dog. and naughty dog yeah i think they they pretty much deliver fantastic gaming with nearly every single release if not everyone and and we'll we'll skip into the next part. Um, we won't we won't see the Bioware game at E three. No, because EA will be skipping E three. Now this this could tie in actually. I I hadn't directly put them together like you just kind of alluded to, but this could be, I mean, an extremely ambitious play by EA. Uh, so basically, they're going to be skipping E three. We're not going to see EA games there. I don't think, or at least they they're not going to have their own slot for. for That's a big like move, that. man. That's a very big move, and they're going to have their own event, which is an even bigger move to me, because like Nintendo, they they didn't show up at one of the uh, the big events, right? Who you know, and they had who Nintendo, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I, I know, but but my my point is that you know most people most people don't though, but for EA, such a huge company that has their hands in everything, to distance themselves from E3, which is the biggest gaming conference in the world, and announce their own competing event called EA Play. I mean, that's extremely yeah. ballsy. It's in two days, bef- a few days before, and it's in Hollywood. Here, here's, uh, it's my, the week. here's my take on that. The, the worst thing about that is having it two days before, you always know that the, the, X, the Microsoft presser, the Sony presser, they usually have EA titles announced. Yeah. So are we going to get these titles announced two days and then E3 the is going to have the same fucking shit announced again? Like, what the fuck? Well, this might be the play by EA to say that, look, we're the future of gaming. We're taking over this market. And with this new Bioware title, I imagine that's where it's going to be announced. Well, like, that's why, like I said, I kind of segue Maybe. to this next point saying you know we're not going to see the the bioware game at e3 because it's published by ea and if it's, yeah if ea is only going to talk about ea titles at the EA conference so that means microsoft sony are not going to have ea so they're not going to have a big fucking fifa presentation that's, they're not going to have the a question. big question like well, because ea usually has its own time slot where they do all well yeah but they stuff. all yeah they do that but they also come out and they also do little side bits with each one like you know with with sony they usually have a guy come out and say about this title is on you yeah. know they have small ones they're not the big part of their thing but yeah and they always have their own their own what an hour hour and a half time slot so if they're going to do a whole event are they talking like a one day just a online press conference thing like a like an ea slot no. but big, says, like uh, EA slot specifically but ea play will take place on june 10th through 12th in hollywood 10th wow. through 12th. Okay. Yeah, so, so a few it's days. a couple of days. While well, E3 takes place June 13 through 15 in LA. So it's huh. it's close enough where people can go to EA Play. Well, and I, then... Again, I'm sure they did that on purpose. Oh, so yeah. It just, well, they'd be it... shooting themselves in the foot if they did it two days before on like the East Coast. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of big guys that aren't going to show up because they're going to get a fucking E3. Yeah, so they're... Well, I mean, 13 to 15th, I mean, it's going to be probably... 
first day is going to be like their their conference thing, like the E3 thing. But I mean, you know, E3 is like for three or four days, and usually there's only one good day of content to watch. The rest of it is a lot of press stuff, a lot of recaps, yeah. a lot oh, of yes. on floor play shit. So it says here, it says Star Wars Battlefront 2 is scheduled to release in the time for 2017. So they're talking about that. They're going to talk about all their sports titles, the, the FIFA Madden, NHL. Um, then it'd be Cash cows, yeah sure. the first two EA Origins games, Fee and Sea of Solitude, whatever the hell those are, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, which releases yep. in March. However, there could be some DLC to show at the conference, duh, and then maybe even some Dragon Age War footage. So that's what they listed in this one article. I mean, I haven't really been doing any more digging on. I think that thing yet. says it's just a list of possible things. That right. They can talk and that's, about. Yeah, this is all tentative because I don't think, and like I said, I haven't done any more digging. But I haven't seen any official, you know, list of what's going to be there because they're not going to release it this early, anyways. You know, nah. This is still February, so it's going to be long before we know exactly what's coming. But those are potential. Um, so ten to the for two. Oh, so ten to the twelve. So, and then. E3 is 13 to 15. So that, with them pulling out of E3 and going, having their own conference, like I said, that's going to pull some content from yeah Microsoft and Sony. Because are they going to sure. repeat themselves? I, I have to, I feel like EA is, they've got to be throwing the gauntlet down though against everyone else um, <laughs> by, by putting so much focus on themselves. I don't think this would be against Sony or Microsoft. No. Because, I mean, obviously those are the platforms that they, they yeah. sell on. Yeah. So it can't be anything to do with them. This has to be to the gaming community. I, I, someone upstairs, the DEAs, got to think they have a big set of nuts, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. yeah but it, um, it's a bold, my guess it's is a that the main. Cotton, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the main driver of this EA event, I think, is going to be this Bioware title. Well, well, yeah, from that potential. Because I I don't know if I've ever seen such a ballsy move to put so much emphasis on how game changing and how big this is going to be a global audience uh, specifically stated in here. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen a studio put something so far in the forefront. And then with that combined with skipping EA and having their own event just before, I mean... This is honestly unprecedented. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, I was surprised when I read the title too. I'm like, EA is skipping E3. So, yeah. like, I mean, I mean, and the EA, I don't feel like is a very ballsy company. I've never felt like they've they would ever ever be attached to anything that would do this. Yeah, and I mean, what, like, I don't know what drove them to say, okay, let's have our they own conference. They did this last year. They did a EA play in 2016. Yeah, but they were they were still at E3, they were still at E3. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean that—that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I understand. Like, Sony has what, like three other than E3. Sony has what, like two other press break press conferences every year. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I understand. Like, if EA wanted to kind of do something and just kind of kind of put the focus on them and do it in house, but two days before E3, pulls you out of being, you know, talking about content solely for Microsoft or Sony during their big press conferences, which are hugely fucking popular. Yeah. Like. They are like fucking crowd favorites, you know. Like people make fun of the EA ones all the time. They make fun of Ubisoft ones, and they still make fun sometimes of Sony and Microsoft ones. But those two, those are the, the you know, are the console guys, right? Yeah. So for them to not be showing up and dropping, you know, some exclusive or or early access shit on that console is that is that what they're like? I don't understand. Yeah. It just to me, it seems like they're going to be either repeating themselves by showing up at their own event and then coming back and showing up again at E3 on the stage for Microsoft and Sony, or they're not even going to be mentioned at all. Like, this is fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You said I've what, never seen yeah. anything like this before. Yeah. They're pulling a fucking Nintendo. <laughs> I know. I'm. I'm. Well. <laughs> no, honestly, because I, 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 don't trust EA whatsoever, but I trust Bioware. Yeah. So, like I said, if, if this is gonna be the new, if this Bioware game that that they're developing is gonna be the new flagship for EA as an entire company, that is again an unprecedented move. That's putting so much faith and in investing so heavily in this one game. 
Yeah. Then I don't I don't know that that's a crippling amount of responsibility. And I mean, and say the end of the fiscal year. So this we're talking like end of this year. Yeah. Or first of next, because then usually their their quarters always roll through to the first of the year for most companies. Yeah. So it's either going to be the end of this year or first of next. So are they going to announce this shit in June, and then we're going to have to wait for more info? To like, you know, I, I don't know. It just seems like if they're if the big Bioware thing is going to be the the holy grail for them, and that's why they're doing their own EA show, that seems like a really far off hail mary. Yeah, well, I'm I'm curious as to why we haven't heard anything more about this because games are typically announced. I mean, what a couple of years sometimes. Yeah, they released. Yeah, well, and I, this is at the end of the fiscal year, so we're talking within. Uh, and it's now February, within eleven months. Yeah, yeah exactly. To release, so we haven't seen a snippet of gameplay. We haven't even heard a title name. We haven't seen a Nothing. teaser trailer. And this, like I said, this was on a conference call, so this wasn't <laughs> even. This wasn't even like really. You know, this wasn't even like a publicized tweet. Oh, Bioware is working on something new. You guys are gonna be blown away. Tweet hashtag whatever nothing <laughs> we just it was at a fucking conference call for financial information so that's really yeah. you're cryptic as fuck yeah i don't know i i i can't wait to hear more though because again with well, this we're, we're, unprecedented we're, we're now intrigued move. we're now yeah. intrigued <laughs> you know there you go way to go ea <laughs> yeah, now, now we know I, I guess i mean if that's the point then you know sure they win this round yeah but they've, they've got to deliver something you know something big if yep. this is going to be what they're teasing us with, because this is, again, just crazy. All right, so we're we're soaking up a lot of time on conjecture here, but EA has us, uh, has us very intrigued. Uh, the next thing we're going to get to is the For Honor open beta. It takes place February 9th through 12th, according to an email that Panther received. Yes, I received that email. Okay. Um, very important. So the open beta, and then it releases on the 13th, right? Um, could that be? No, 14th, a Tuesday. 14th yeah so Valentine's yeah okay. it's 9th to the 12th the weekend then monday would be um yeah so there was a a closed two they actually had two close well they had a closed alpha uh, i played the closed alpha um i didn't get in the last closed beta that was last weekend or two weekends ago but there's an open one coming so anyone who didn't get a chance to get in or didn't get an invite to the for honor they're going to be able to play it give it a try see what they think of it um I don't see it as a title that I'm going to be picking up unless there's something new that shows up um, from the alpha to the, at least to the open beta. Um, but the next point is kind of interesting. And this kind of, this is kind of a little ominous. Yeah. Um, it says reviewers won't have access to for honor until launch. So it's usually not a good sign that what, what they're what it says in the article and it's all all this stuff's going to be linked in, in the details there'll be lots of shit for you people to, to go through and read if you want um but the thing it says is the fact that they're having the open beta on the weekend before release so that monday they're going to be resetting all the servers and then getting ready for launch day so there's no people might have that the, the reviewers might get access a little early but they're not going to get any more gameplay or access like a week in advance or anything like they normally do so yeah. that's kind of weird that they're that they're doing an open beta the weekend before, but not giving the reviewers access. So that's that's weird. Yeah, I, the uh, the betas that they have usually take place at, at, at least a couple weeks before release. Yeah, you know be, the the beta is used to make it, it's obviously going to like be a stress, stress test. test sure. Yeah, yeah, it it is, but they're not giving for, themselves much time to. Yeah, that's a very small gap. Yeah, they should have. They should have done like instead of having the when they had the the, the closed invite only beta there two weeks ago or a week ago, that should have been their open beta. Yes, that should have been their full. Because what if this open beta, they get I don't know, two hundred fifty five thousand people. I don't know how many people are gonna play the game. You know, a million people jump on the servers for the weekend and they fucking shit themselves horribly. What are they gonna do? Are they gonna be able to fix it in one day to have it ready for launch? Like it's, <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, exactly. That seems like a pretty pretty poor way to do that i mean open betas for online multiplayer games are fucking smart but oh yeah like one do they have one day to fix any massive issues they happen to find with you know the whole world having access to a game that's fucking stupid yeah and i mean you, i mean inevitably betas you, you figure out a lot of problems yeah and how old is the beta build from the weekend going to be versus the yeah. launch so is it the same beta that was two weeks ago 
So it, what's I don't know. I just I mean Ubisoft yeah. do using that fucking stupid. Yeah, it's just it's questionable for sure. Yeah. Um, the ominous point to me is just the the reviewers won't have access to it until launch. I mean that again is usually a bad sign, and I instantly have the cold sweat fear of the No Man's Sky launch all over again. <laughs> Oh my god, don't tell that, I don't want to have a PTSD attack. <laughs> <laughs> you poor bastards. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. That makes me nervous. Uh, this is a game I've been looking forward to for well over a year. And as it's closer here, I am getting more excited. So I, I don't know if I'll be able to, to wait too long for reviews. But I, I'm going to try to hold out. Yeah, I am very interested in this. Uh, like I said, we'll have to give the, we'll have to give the, the beta a go and and I'll yeah. see where from there. But like I said, I played the I played the alpha, and I, it was all right. But I just don't see it being enough to 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 to, to warrant a full price game to, to go on through. It seems like it's something that should be, you know. Like I said, we never played any campaigns, so I have no idea what their campaign is going to entail. Yeah. Def- okay. Definitely wait and see. All right. The next point that we have is Sniper Ghost Warrior Three. When you pre-order. For PS4 or PC, you will get a season pass for free. Um, they had actually worded this differently. I just made it rational. Yeah, um, you, 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 you read it correctly. <laughs> it was written really weird, but yeah, I don't know why the website... A little misleading on their title, yeah. But but if you if you pre-order the game, then you're going to get a season pass for free. That's what it comes down to. And I think that's a pretty cool incentive. Yeah, better than, better yeah. than some, some pre-orders. Hey, get a, get a skin for a gun or yeah, get, get a free hat or... <laughs> You know, it definitely yeah, giving you access to a season pass, yeah. uh, and I don't think all the details for the season pass were revealed. Like it's not saying what it's going to be. Um, like I said, this was just so the season pass is regular thirty bucks. So you're you're yeah. pre order you get you're saving thirty dollars. So yeah, yeah. So now, I, I've never actually played any of the Sniper Ghost Warrior games. I've always been like vaguely interested in them because I like sniper gameplay. Um, but I've always seen a lot of mediocre reviews, so I've just passed on them. Yeah, same. Even when I've seen them on some of the PlayStation sales, I was kind of like, do I not buy that? And I'm thinking, I got too many fucking games I'm not playing. Why am I going to buy another <laughs> one? Yeah. yeah, I mean, any, anyone that's into the into the Sniper the Ghost Warrior series is, you know, there's there's an incentive to pre-order on PS4 and yeah. PC. So I, that's pretty that's a pretty neat thing to do. Yeah, if, if you know you're going to get this game, if you're a fan of the Ghost Warrior franchise, then uh, there's... I don't see any reason not to. No. So go for it by all means. It's just nice that a company is a little more rewarding, you know. He's yeah. saying you're going to invest in our game by pre-ordering, then we're going to invest back in you, and we're going to give you some some content. That's cool. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, this is actually big news for me. I love this. Uh, Dead by Daylight is coming to consoles in 2017. I'm super excited for that. Yeah, I knew that. I knew you'd be happy to see that. Yes, because I'm a I'm a big big supporter of Dead by Daylight on PC. Um, I think that it's it's an awesome awesome gameplay setup that they have, and it's a hell of a lot of fun because each map is different. It's pr- procedurally generated each session that you're in, so you have to constantly like the the feeling of anxiety and stress does not go away by playing this game more. <laughs> I've seen a little bit of gameplay, and I, and I definitely I definitely wouldn't mind um, getting my hands on and giving it a try. Uh, on yeah. PC, um, I don't know if my current regular will play it, but um, if I do end up getting upgraded video card for the near future, I could see myself giving this a go. I've seen a little bit of gameplay; it looks like it could be a lot of fun. It definitely is. It's it's very cool, and it, and especially like it's it's both frustrating and rewarding that you cannot communicate with the other players. Um, it adds more to the stress of like. You, you can't really communicate on how you want to work together, but you can kind of, you know, if you find other people, you get rewarded for that in-game with experience. Um, if you, like, try to repair one of the generators, you you do it faster with somebody else. So, like, teamwork is rewarded, but also I've had plenty of situations to where, like, I'm, like, trying to hide, and then somebody's being chased, and they bring the guy directly to me. And I'm like fuck my life, <laughs> and then I have to try to escape because he goes after me. Like it's it's very stressful like that because they could either help you or they could just say really you know you. go after this guy, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's always an enjoyable experience, even if I even if I do bad, it's still you know. Maybe, like the, maybe you should live stream that sometime. Hey, right? maybe. Yeah, might do. It. We all fucking laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, laugh with you. That's it. Sorry. Of yeah. course, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so the uh, the next thing is Far Cry 5 release has been possibly leaked on GameStop upcoming release list. Um, does it say? I don't have the link open right now. Let me. Does it say what date was possibly uh, released? November, I do We've believe. We've got a clickbait article here. Yeah, um, like I said, it's... November 26th, 2017. But being that day of the week, the 26th is not a released, regular release day. Yeah. Um, people figure that's just a placeholder. Cause if, placeholder. I've, cause I've, some games are released on Fridays, which is rare, so it could be a 24th or Tuesday at 28th of November. So it's a placeholder title as per usual. Um, and we were talking pre-podcast. How much of the stuff is really leaked? Yeah, you know, I mean, they go, oh, well, look, le- leaking things is a marketing point. It yeah, has been. and I mean, like, you know, we're I figured we we're getting another Far Cry game eventually. I just, I just, you know, um, can't say for sure whether this is even true. Um, it's SG Gaming website. I'm not really familiar with their website, um, no. but I mean, it's. I mean, other people maybe with the website i'm not knocking the, the, the website for sure but um we don't want to be a big rumor mill website well, a gaming podcast but it's definitely something if anyone's a fan of the far cry series which i am so um i'm hoping we're gonna see um some stuff at e3 as well on this if it's if it's legit we'll see it at e3 yeah Ubisoft um, always we have a big conference <laughs> yeah we have uh congratulations in order sony very well done. You have sold over 57 million PlayStation 4s. So that's a awesome. yeah, applause that for you. That is mind-blowing. That's great news. Yeah. Xbox yeah. One sold 12 million. No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Kidding. Yeah, but I um, <laughs> Actually, Xbox One has been doing a lot better recently. Oh, yeah. yeah it's I been mean, really yeah, stretching its legs. Oh, definitely. I was making a joke. Come on now. We all, we all shit on Xbox, don't we? Isn't that, our, isn't that, our, <laughs> isn't that the PlayStation 4 mantra? Yeah, but, pretty much. But yeah, I mean that was pretty impressive to see the the number fifty seven million consoles. That's not that's shipped. That's sold. That's not like they shipped to retailers. That means off the shelf, someone bought those. Yep. That is that is impressive. That just goes to sh- yeah show you what you know what the hell the console is. I mean how good it is, reliable it is. You know, I mean if it's a broken piece of shit, no one would buy it. <laughs> Yeah, and because it'll tell you what kind of contents on it too. If there's worth that many people buying it, so that's how many new gamers. I mean, like how many yeah. people new to gaming and new to console gaming bought a PS4? You yeah. know. Well, I mean, this is uh, we haven't talked about this, and that there's no information here, but maybe one of you guys know has uh, PS4 has already turned a profit, right? I'm assuming with 57 million, it's had to have. I do believe so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh, I haven't. I haven't looked at like any. I any I imagine because I was just thinking, you know, fifty-seven million. That's a hell of a lot of money. You got that plus the mandatory PlayStation Plus for yeah. uh, for online play, yeah. which I can say nearly everybody with a PS4 would have. You know, yeah. that's my guess. Well, yeah, I'd say a, I'd say a large. It'd be would be well over the fifty percent of purchasers would have. Yeah, yeah. There was there was numbers released on. On yeah, and Polygon put an article out on May twenty third of twenty fourteen, where Sony CEO said the PS four is already profitable. There you go. There you go. Okay. So within yeah, within wow. And then the there's one all. from April of twenty sixteen. PS four boosts Sony to first full year profit. Wow. In the last three years. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Fantastic yeah. performance. Yeah, good so, stuff. I mean, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I mean, then they, then they come in with the pros. So I mean, it just it just. Yeah. It's icing on the cake, so to speak. Compound yeah, PS, PS4 is really, really stretching its legs this console generation. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. I'm impressed. Yeah. All right, so our last topic of the night, the penis topic. We haven't had one of these for a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. The whole last podcast was a penis topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's stupid. It's Nintendo. Nintendo is just no, I mean, it, this, this entire podcast has been – nearly exclusively uh positive and some fresh news yeah uh we have a an actual like by itself like this is a negative part right here this is the penis topic yeah um so for those of you listening that don't remember the penis topic is something we pick out that's gaming news or gaming related that seems like the companies or the, the corporations are really 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 dicking us that's why we call it the penis topics because they're being dicks yeah um so this podcast penis topic uh earlier in the week EA SR, what is SR? Service manager, senior manager. Senior manager, uh, Daniel Lingen, 
tweets out hashtag skate four. And that so was for you it. Guys are the, yeah, that was it. Just hashtag yeah. skate four. So for you guys that are fans of the skate franchise um, that follow this dude, uh, you probably got excited, but hold your horses because in another tweet, it's confirmed by EA. So this goes higher up than him now. His boss has caught a hold of this. They are not currently developing Skate 4. So it's either a troll move or maybe he was just trying to judge a reaction or interest. Uh, nobody really knows, but without a doubt, the penis move of the week. What a dick. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, guess, we have... I guess the title is the earlier in the week. I guess it should have been like probably it's probably close to two weeks. It just, I guess it probably was shortly after. Um, it'd be at least yeah, it'd be at least a week and a half ago. I'd say that initial tweet came out. I'd say I should have I should have screenshotted the tweet, but um, it was posted on on Reddit. Um, people have been calling for Skate Four since PS4 launch. Yeah, you know since since new gen or current or since you know new gen but is now current gen. I've been looking for a new Skate game because since Tony Hawk was a last game was a, a flaming fucking pile of shit. Yeah, but I mean, to you tweet mean out everyone since Pro Skater Two to tweet out like just skate four and not say is anyone interested in it or like not just to tweet yeah. out that and then you know and then in the ea conference there are their sorry their conference but their financial call the conference call um they mentioned what games are in development like their their typical madden and their yada yada stuff like i mean if you want to go through and read all that but there's no mention of of skate four being in development and yep. this other tweet that came out confirmed that they're not currently developing it. So it, ah, man, that just so this, this guy, this guy tweets about a non-existent product. Yeah, that's that's a fucking dick move in my mind. Write it yeah. down at EA Play. They will announce <laughs> development of Skate Four. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, there you go. It's that's that's probably yeah, if 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 he paired this with uh, a following tweet that said hashtag EA Play, then we would know exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. You know, and that's different, but but maybe, maybe in the weeks to come we're gonna. Well, see maybe it. they wanted to save it as a as a, a surprise for EA playing <laughs> this dude. You know, fucking shit the bed on it. Senior, yeah, the senior manager. I'm sure the senior manager would be stupid enough to fucking leak yeah. leak out. Well, at at this it's point, just... if they wanted to, if they do have it in uh, development, they wanted it to be a surprise, and this guy ruined it. I think this wouldn't be the point to say, "Oh no, no, we don't." You know, like if they right. say that, then. That looks bad on EA. That looks like there's conflict in the ranks there. Hey, they man. should have just Jedi confirmed it. Work on simple minded yeah. people. Right? So yeah, so, <laughs> so like I said, them coming out and saying tweet is confirmed, he is not currently developing again. So you know there was feedback. You know yeah. that there was a lot of questions asked and unanswered and people probably got, Oh, what the fuck's going on? You're not telling me anything. Is this gonna be you know, I don't know what kind of questions people asked, but someone had to have asked questions. Yep. And they had to realize, well, we're getting slammed, so we need to, you know, put the fire out before, you know, it yeah. becomes a negative more yeah. than maybe already has. I don't know. But, I mean, gauging, if they're looking to gauge gauge interest, I mean, they should already know the interest was there. You know? Yeah. I mean, people, like I said, people have been asking for it since, since current gen. So, and I mean, like I said, I, I we've talked pre-podcast. You, you said yourself you weren't really a... a, a I don't say a fan of it, but you had no interest in it. Um, I work. I don't think you were there at the time of the conversation. But I played Skate Two a bit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, I played a lot of Skate Three, and it was fun. So I, I I would be looking forward to if they had if they come back with the with the Skate Three, you know, kind of gameplay mechanics and and brought back and just a big updated version. Of it. Obviously, they don't fucking change everything and try to reinvent the wheel but yeah I'd, I'd be happy with another skate game i wouldn't complain yeah i mean it's it's been a franchise for a while now i mean like i said pre-podcast the the last you know skating games that i was into of course was tony hawk's pro skater not the last one but uh the the classic ones yeah the good so, ones yeah <laughs> yeah i was a big fan of those um and then i think i played the original skate and it was okay but i think i had just kind of grown out of skateboarding games yeah like I said, I, so, I'm never a skateboarder ever. Yeah. But I mean, well, it, and it, the game like, just, like it, we touched on. Yeah, I mean, the game was just fun to play. So I mean, and I mean, like I said, a lot of people have been asking and just died yeah. just to out and out go, oh, skateboard hashtag and yeah, Fuck yeah. You. Well, and, and like we said uh, pre-podcast, you know, to to reiterate what a dick move this is, you could replace if if you guys don't care about skate, that's fine. But you could replace this with any other title. Or any other franchise, right. and if it's hashtag not Uncharted Five, internet burns down. 
Right. Exactly. Hashtag Half Life so Three. Yeah. yeah to, to to treat the fans of any game or franchise this way is is a dick move. Yeah. Unless, so, like I said, they're so fuck this guy. They're just they're just trying to get the internet flaming up. So whenever EA Play shows up yeah, and they it's very easy, they drop a Skate Four game <laughs> in there, people be losing their fuck fucking yourself. minds. Yeah. But yeah, Daniel Daniel Lingen, fuck you. Yeah, as of right now. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, no, I'm dead. writing him off forever. I don't trust him. Anymore. Oh yeah, but fuck yeah. you. We're done. We're done. You're dead to us. <laughs> You're dead to us. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're at the end of the podcast here. We're gonna uh, close it down for tonight. Um, as always, we ask you guys to uh, comment if you have any questions, any concerns, any more information, or just tell us to fuck ourselves and we're stupid. Whatever you guys feel like. Of course, you can comment. Uh, you're free to do so. Uh, you can check us out in our SoundCloud page. Everything will be linked in the description of the video as well. Um, for SoundCloud, you can you can download them. You can listen to them through the app. Um, it's all easily reachable through there as well. Um, of course, this video will be on YouTube. So let us know what you guys think, any questions you have, and thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, later. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Gary, Indiana.